everybody. Good morning. I welcome you to today's discussion and lesson. Um, I hope you have your Bible and your notes to be straight huh? because you're reading a story from the city of York. Um, so let's just say a short prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we begin our service, our lesson and discussion today. We ask that God, whatever story we need, we'll be able to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. So, sometime back, we spoke about the storm and how um, Peter was walking over water. Today, we are going to talk about the prodigal son. And with this time, this time we we'll read our Bible, we we'll discuss it, we we'll discuss the story before we watch our movie. So let's visit the city of Luke. Um, community 15, house number 11 to 32. So Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. If you've opened your Bible to Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32, shout Amen. Amen. So I'm reading Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. The parable of the lost son. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent every day, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened cow and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field when he came near the house. He heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what was going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted cow because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered, his father. Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when his son when the son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened cow for him. Verse 31. My son. The father said, You are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead 
and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. So looking at the story, you realize that we have three main characters. The father, the younger son, and the older son. How we describe the father? Today we concentrate on the love of the father. The love of the father. We are looking at the parable of the lost son. In your Bible, you probably have the prodigal son. But we are concentrating today on the love of the father. So I'll ask you, who is a father? It will be interesting to hear someone say that a father is daddy. Daddy is father. Yes, daddy is father. But if you Google, you realize that Google will tell you that a father is a male parent of a child. So with your parents, you have mommy, you have daddy. So daddy is the male, daddy is the father. Now, what do, what do fathers do? How do we expect our fathers to cheat us? What should they do for us? What is the responsibility of a father? One is to protect, one is to provide, and one is to lead. So three, I'm giving you three. There are many others, but I've summarized it into three. Protection, provision, and leading. Do we find these characteristics with the father in the parable of the lost son? Let's find out. We, hear, we see Jesus talking to us in verse 11. And then in verse 12, we see how the younger son tells the father to give him his share of, him, of his inheritance. Now, as a child, before you get your inheritance, your father should have died before your inheritance is given to you. But you realize that this father is so loving and compassionate and willingly gives his younger son his inheritance without even having an argument with him. So what? The Bible says that, so he divided his property between them. Now, them represents the younger son and the older son. As we read on, we realize that the younger son took all his inheritance and went away from his father and his older brother. Now, wherever this younger son went to, he spent every single thing he had. He didn't even leave, not even 50 pesos alone. He spent every single thing he had. And now what happens? There's farming. When we say farming, it means that there's no food to eat. Now this younger son really struggled. And then fortunately, he found what? A citizen in the country where he went to. Now this citizen didn't even give him any proper job. He said he should go and feed pigs. Now we are living in our parents' house. We are living in your father's house. You are living in your uncle's house. You are living in your brother's house. If you have a big brother, he has a house. You are living with him. If he told you to go and feed a dog, will you go? Me, I'm afraid of dogs. So no, I won't go. But considering how hungry the younger son was, he took it. He went to feed pigs. He probably even ate the, the pig's food. Ew, no. I mean, I'll eat jollof and chicken and all that, but a pig's food, an animal's mm -hmm. It's, it's not nice, don't even try it. So in all this struggle of the younger son, he remembers that he has what, sinned against heaven and against his father. So he thought, my father treats his servants well. Daddy treats our household well. Daddy treats our cousins well. Yeah, I mean, daddy will treat everybody well. How much more me, his child, his daughter, his son. I will be treated well in my father's house, so I will go back and go to my father and ask him for forgiveness. In verse 21, you realize that the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Verse 22, let's see what the father does. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Now we realize 
realize that at home, you can be very disrespectful sometimes. Then you say, go and wash my car. Mm, Daddy, I don't want to go. I'm tired. I'm going to do my homework. No, I'm not going to do anything. We do all this at the end of the day. Daddy will still make provision for us. He will give us money. He will buy us clothes. He will take us out. All the KFCs we've had, all the pieces we've eaten. Daddy is providing all this for us. But yet, we still disrespect him. Daddy is showing us love. He's showing us that he is slow to anger. And we see exactly the same thing with that of the younger son's father. But all this aside, the older son is there and he's watching. I'm pretty sure he would ask himself, Does my father love me? Does my father love me? Now, what is love? I know some of us will say love is if you are feeling something or something is doing you, you don't know how to react. But I'll say that love is a mix of emotions or behavior associated with strong feeling of affection. A mix of emotions or behavior associated with strong feeling of affection. How many, I mean, um, we go to school, we have friends, we talk to them, and hear that this one is not love, this one is love. We have so many types of love. We have the agape, we have the storage, we have the philia, we have so many. But I want us today to look at selfless love, the love that we have for our friends, our parents, our family members, the love that we have for ourselves. I'll take what the father did to show his love. How did the father show his love to his two sons? For instance, the younger son. The father waited and watched out for him. Yes, the younger son left home, but the father was waiting for him till he came back home. Secondly, when the younger son came back home, the father did not punish him for what he had done. He forgave him. He accepted him. He welcomed him back home. This is how the father showed his love to his son. Now, if this, this father, right, I believe, I would, I would like to say that this earthly father, if this is how this earthly father showed his love to his son, how much more our father in heaven? How much more God? We are all children of God. Are we disobedient sometimes? Yes. In, in some way, do we sin? Yes, we do sin. How, did God, how does God show his love to us? Now, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. That is how God showed his love to us as his children. Now, God is waiting for us to come to him. To come to him and say that, God, I am sorry, I have sinned. I'm confessing all my sins. Please forgive me. And he will forgive us. Do not think that if you go and pick meat for your soup, if you tell a lie, if you go and beat somebody and run away, um, if you slap someone, if you gossip about someone, do not think that one is bigger than the other. Do not think taking meat from the soup is smaller than telling a lie against someone. It is the same thing. It is still sin. There's nothing like greater sin and smaller sin. Sin is sin. And today, our Father in heaven is telling us that he loves us unconditionally. His unfailing love exists for us. Let's take a look at how the father in the story shows his love to his older son. In verse 28, where the older son comes back from hunting, and he saw that his younger brother has come, and a fat cow has been killed for him. He's angry. And I read verse 28, Luke chapter 15, verse 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. Because of the love the father has for the older son, he went out to say, My son, please come inside. The younger son said, But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. 
But when this son of yours has fun, who has funded your property with prostitutes' counsel, you kill the fattened calf for him. Now, it should, when you hear this son talk, the older son talking, you realize that it has pained him. Maybe for you, every day you are praying, God, please give mommy and daddy money to buy something for me. God, please, I'm hungry. I want food to eat. I'm not getting food. You feel like God is not there. So you, um, you look for other means and ways of surviving. No, God is there. He has heard you. You are not better than someone. You are unique. Let's listen to what the father says to the son. Verse 39, verse 31. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. We are children of God. Every single thing God has created on this earth belongs to us. Verse 32. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. We have friends, we have cousins that we play with. They may not be Christians, but they may pray equally as we pray. Whatever they ask for, they get. But unfortunately, with you, you don't get. God is telling us that. We are with him. He loves us. Everything on this earth is for us. I want us to take note that. Uh, sorry, I want us to take note that whatever we ask God, He is ever ready to give to us. He has the capacity to provide for us. With God, everything is possible. Repeat. With God, everything is possible. Our main lesson I want you to take from this is that a Heavenly Father is always ready to forgive. It doesn't matter how far you go. God is waiting for you to come to Him. And He's willing and He's ready to accept you. Let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. So now we are moving from the city of Luke to the city of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. And it says that, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. First John chapter First John chapter 1 chapter 1 verse 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then we move to the city of Psalms. So Psalm 86, verse 5. Psalm 86, verse 5. Psalm 86, verse 5. I read, You, Lord, are forgiven and good, abounding in love, to all who call to you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. God is forgiving. He is good. His love abounds. His, his love is so is, is great. You, you can't quantify it. And he's saying that to all who call to you. So look at the world. If every single, if every single individual in this world or on, on this earth is calling on God. He says that his what? He's forgiven and good. His abounding love to all who call to him. He's providing us with all these things. So we shouldn't lose hope. Now to end our lesson, I have two activities for you. The first one I call the lost and found challenge. The lost and found challenge. Now there are four questions that you have to answer. We have three different scriptures that we read. The first, write it down. The first question is, what two things were lost? What two things were lost? The second one is, why do you think those things got lost? Why do you think those things got lost? 
Question three, how were they found? How were they found? Question four, what does this tell us about God? What does this tell us about God? So our first challenge is from Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 10. Luke chapter 15, verse 1 to 10. Our second challenge, I mean the same questions apply to all the three challenges. The second challenge is from Luke 17, 11 to 19. Luke 17, 11 to 19. And then our third challenge is Luke 19, 1 to 10. Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. Luke 19, verse 1 to 10. Now you take all these three passages and answer the questions. Now when you answer the question, you give it to your daddy to go through and mark it for you. The second challenge we would attach the link to this recording, this video. So it is a storyboard coloring page. It's showing pictures of father and children. Now you're supposed to color them. This is the second activity you are going to do. So you can print it out and color. If you do not want to print it out and you want to draw yourself and your father, that's fine. Draw yourself and your father color it out. So I'll show you what I was able to color. It's not complete, but this is what I was able to do. So I printed it out and I colored. I hope I did a good job with this color. I mean, it was not the best, but I know you can do something better, so please do. Thank you. To end our lesson, I would like us to say a prayer. But before we say a prayer, I hope you have learned that God's love is unfailing. It abounds. If you call to him, he's with you. I mean, he's always with you. You don't have to call to him before he's with you. He's always with you. He's protecting us. He's providing for us. He's leading us in the right path. So let's trust him. These are the few lessons that I want you to take away. Now, to end the lesson, I'd like us to say a short prayer. So if you are sitting down, if you are lying on the floor, please be on your feet. Put your notebook aside, put your Bible down, drop your pen, drop your pencil. Let's close our eyes and let's say this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful story. That shows us your love and forgiveness. Help us never to forget that we can always run to you no matter what we have done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'd like you to enjoy our movie, but before the movie, we'll do our memory verse and then we'll call it a day. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Charles. God, we should bless you for this powerful message. Now it's now time for the memory verse. So let's all say it together. Psalm 8, verse 5. Oh Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Psalm 86 verse 5. Let's all say it again. Psalm 86 verse 5. Oh Lord, you are so good. So ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Psalm 86, verse 5. Let's say for the last time. Psalm 86, verse 5. Oh Lord. You are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Psalm 86, verse 5. Amen.
So now, we are going to say it alone. We will not take part. Let's all say it. Wow, that's wonderful. Clap for yourself. Okay. So, what the child has said everything, I just want to add a little. It's just talking about the love of God. How God loves us so much that He's willing to forgive us of all our sins. So, if only we come to Him with a humble heart and confess our sins before God, God will embrace us into his bosom and forgive us of all our sins and to give us the feelings that how much he cares for us. So let us trust God, let us believe in him in everything that we are doing, let us believe in him. Let us not hide anything from God, always let us draw closer to him and confess our sins to him and he's ready to embrace us so let's pray our heavenly father we are very grateful and thank you for this wonderful man loves our heavenly father we are much grateful unto you we thank you lord jesus for this wonderful love that you have shown unto us that amidst all our wrong doing whenever you come to us Oh, you welcome us and forgive us of our sins and accept us just as we are. We thank you, we bless you for an answered prayer. We are committing the week into your hand that as we have heard your word, help us to ponder over it and give us the grace to always come to you with a humble heart. This is many things we pray of that given. Amen. Amen. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, Father, I want my share of your estate now, before you die. So, his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land, and there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pots he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but 
no one gave him anything. <laughs> when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. He wasted everything his father gave him. While he had the job of feeding the pigs, the young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he came to his senses and said, My father's workers have plenty to eat and here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt sorry for him. He ran to his son. hugged and kissed him. Hurry and bring the best clothes and put them on him. Give him a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Get the best calf and prepare it so we can eat and celebrate. The son of mine was dead but has now come back to life. He was lost and has now been found. And they began to celebrate.